Turn your Bible to Isaiah chapter 9. Praise God. Look at verse 6. He said, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. Are you there? And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. John 3, 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. In the midst of Christmas celebration, there are certain things you need to understand. The message for today is titled, The Reason for the Season. Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. What did I say? The reason for the season. The reason for the season. Every time you see something happening or in the midst of celebration like this, understand the reason why that celebration is going on. Some people just believe that Christmas and Xmas is just a time when people gather their families, some travel for the at least once in a year to go and see their hometown, their villages. No. Some think that the reason why Christmas is being celebrated is because of the new clothes you wear and the food you're going to eat. There is no amount of food you want to eat or any kind of dish you want to take by tomorrow 25 that you have not taken before. Am I right? I don't think there's any kind of delicacy or any kind of meal. No matter how many hours you spend in the kitchen to prepare that food or that meal, you can't tell me you've not eaten such before. So there's nothing new about it. So we need to understand the reason for the season. The reason for the season is Christ. Amen. I say amen. amen. The reason for this season is who? We're talking about Christ. So there are certain things you must understand even in the spirit of Christmas celebration. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have an everlasting life. The question is why did he send his son Jesus Christ? He has a mission and if that mission is not accomplished then talking about celebration of Christmas when we talk about Christmas according to the Jewish calendar it is believed to be a time whereby just like when you celebrate birthday. It's always a time to remember when Jesus was born. That is what is believed. Now, this birthday celebration, that's what I call it. It's a birthday celebration. Just like you celebrate your birthday every year for those who want to celebrate. There is more to it. The person we are talking about is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's not just an ordinary person. So in the midst of all our celebration, if the reason why Jesus was born is not fulfilled in your life, then your merriment makes no sense. Am I talking to somebody here? Are you really following what I'm saying? It's not just all about the clothes you're going to wear. It's not all about the food you're going to eat. It's not about the meal. It's not about the outing. It's not about the places you're going to visit on Christmas Day. No. What it is all about is Christ himself. So, he gave us his son. He said, for God so loved the world. He gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. 
So if you are celebrating Christmas in the midst of the celebration and merriment and everything you're doing, and Christ is not in you, you are wasting your time. It makes no sense. There's a reason why he was born. He was born to come and save mankind. He was born to come and redeem us. He was born to break the clutches of sin in our life. God gave him to us so that through him, we can be redeemed. Am I talking to somebody? Are you sure somebody's here? Praise the Lord. That's the reason why he came. So the question you should be asking yourself is, the way I am now, do I know Christ? Am I really a child of God? How do you know somebody who is a child of God? It is somebody who makes the word of God a standard for his life. When the word of God is your standard, that's what makes you a Christian. So when you look at the English word Christian, if you remove the word I-A-N in the spelling, what you have there is Christ. So nobody can claim to be a Christian when Christ is not in you. Am I talking to somebody here? And we all believe it is people who call themselves Christians. They are the one who celebrate Christmas. Hello. But how many of them really understand what it means to serve God? It's not all about the food. It's not all about the merriment. Like I said before, I will say it again. There is nothing you will eat in this season you've not eaten before. Praise the Lord. In fact, People who fail to understand the reason, because the message say the reason for the season. There are people who fail to understand the reason for the season. It is time for Christmas. We're talking about Jesus Christ. And you will now find out at the end of this Christmas merriment, celebration, and jubilation, when you go to the hospital, a lot of abortions, the no, uh, count of abortions, in the hospital now become on the high side young girls are pregnant what happened between December 23 to January 5th which they were celebrating the Christmas they talk about a lot of bad things and atrocities have happened am I talking to somebody here and by January second week third week the number of people that are doing abortions in the hospital is on the high side. Jennifer, what happened? He said, ah, during Christmas, the boy I went out with, now give me belly. Okay, you have Jennifer in your house? Oh, sorry. Amen. Amen. Then I asked Esther, Esther, what happened? He said, I don't know. It was the handwork of the devil. It is because they don't understand the reason for the season. The reason for the season is not a time for you to commit atrocity. This is the time you now see people who gather themselves, sit down in one drinking bar or joint. They will drink and drink and drink and drink and drink themselves to stupor. After drinking themselves to stupor, they don't even know the direction to their house. Some fall on the road, some fall on the streets. And when they manage to bring you down to your house, when you regain consciousness, they ask you, what happened? You say, ah, now the Christmas celebration, I took over gauge. That's not the reason for Christmas celebration. Understand the reason why Jesus was born. Failure to understand that you're wasting your time. The food you're going to eat, the clothes you're going to wear, and everything, and all the people you've booked appointment with, both those who have given you the hotels where you're going to meet them. All those things are not, this, that's not the reason for the season. The reason for the season is Christ. Anything out of it is not of God. Praise the Lord. Somebody's not here. I say, Praise the Lord. I saw a woman some time ago. Are you really following what I'm saying here? I saw a woman some time ago. And um, I think she had problem with her husband. What was the problem? That was about three years ago. What was the problem? That she requested for a particular amount of money to enable her get clothes for the children to wear. 
there is this African mentality that every Christmas you must buy new clothes for your children and maybe for your loved ones. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying here. In the case of that woman, the husband was not able to provide the money needed. And the woman said, my, my children cannot just be different on that day. I'm ready to do anything to make sure my children are outstanding. And as she's ready to do anything, she went out a man somewhere, spoke to her to sleep with her, and she agreed. And the man went in with her. And after all said and done, the man gave her money. And from the money, she bought clothes for her children to wear. For what? Christmas. You don't understand. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying here. It makes no sense. Who are you trying to impress? You don't kill yourself because you're celebrating Christmas. Understand the reason why we celebrate. The reason for the season. Understand that it is Christ. Then what you don't have should not bother you. There are people who kill themselves over nothing. What you don't have should not stress you. I've told you this countless times. Anything you don't have, see it that it's not yet your time. Because when your time comes, you don't even need to pray more about it. God will give it to you. Am I talking to somebody? Jesus is the reason for the season. So if you, your life is not in Christ, then stop wasting your time putting on any clothes or trying to prepare one of the best meal. He said, by fire, by force. If I don't prepare so and so food tomorrow, heaven will fall. For crying out loud, all the things you're going to eat, both somebody who ate chicken, somebody who ate turkey, somebody who ate uh, beef, name them. At the end, we'll all go to the toilet. True of us. That is where the end product is. And for those who will overfeed themselves and take too much pepper soup, at the end of the day, you'll be purging. Some of you pot for three days, some pot for one week, some pot for seven days. And you start going to the chemist to go and get some drugs because you want to be healthy. That's not the reason for the season. The reason for the season is Christ. Then if you understand that the reason for the season is Christ, then you must do what it takes to please God. That means you understand the reason why Jesus was born. Amen. Somebody's not here. I say amen. Amen. Can I hear somebody shout a louder amen? amen? He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. If you believe in him, he said, but have an everlasting life. There is a reason why he was born. When you check the Old Testament, there were many times God gave us a lot of laws to keep. We couldn't keep them. We couldn't keep them. He gave us the Ten Commandments. How many could keep them? Some would keep seven, break three, keep five, break five, keep six, break four, keep nine, break one. And it continued like that. Until he gave us a commandment he called love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. How do you know somebody who loves God? is somebody who hears the word of God and obeys the word. It is one thing to hear God's word and it's another thing to obey his word. Men of God preach every day. People listen to their messages and preachings. But how many hears this word and keep to it? It is those who hear the word and they obey the word. Those are the ones who are Christians. You don't know a child of God by somebody who comes to church. Even devils go to church. Witches go to church. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Are you feeling what I'm saying here? It's not everybody who you see walking. These clothes will wear, cover a lot of things. Some are worse than animals. And they will dress gorgeous. You see them seated in church. So how do you know a Christian? It's not by, I go to church every week. Even demons go to church. Devil go to church. Jezebel goes to church. Are you not aware? How you know somebody who is a true worshiper? Is somebody who worships God in spirit and in truth. Is somebody who hears the word of God and obeys the word. Is somebody who makes the word of God a standard for his or her living. You make the word of God a standard for your life. Everything you want to do, everything you want to say, every action you want to take, everything is in accordance 
with God and his will. Praise the Lord. So that is the reason for the season. So for those of you who have making a lot of negative, strange decisions of the places you're going to visit and the places you're going to go or the things you're going to do, understand that that is not the reason for the season. The reason for the season is Jesus. So if Jesus is not your number one reason for this Christmas, then you don't know what you are doing. Who are those that celebrate Christmas? Is he not Christians? Christians. Then who is a Christian? A Christian is somebody who has Christ inside of him. That's why the English word Christian, if you remove I and what you see there is what? Christ. Praise the Lord. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, did you hear what pastor said this morning? What did your neighbor say? Now, in Isaiah 9 verse 6, it says, Unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders. So God made us to understand, as Jesus was born and is given to us, and we all are to submit to him, we are to have his lifestyle, his character. He's equally making us to understand that he is our leader. He said the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful. He's our leader. We should learn from him. We should imitate him. We should copy him. There are people who claim to be Christians but they copy the lifestyle of the devil himself. Am I talking to somebody here? If you are here, somebody say I'm here. Amen. amen. I say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Can I hear somebody shout a better hallelujah? hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I've seen a woman told the husband some time ago when they were quarreling, he said to the husband, he said, listen, you see this Christmas, if you don't give me what I want, when I finish with you, I will tell you that the Lucifer himself is an apprentice in my hand. <laughs> my God. He said the Lucifer is an apprentice. That means Lucifer, they learn work for a hand. Why are we killing ourselves? Because of Christmas celebration? No. If you are in Christ, be happy. Your life is safe. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. If your life is in Christ, be happy. You know why? Your life is safe. You are in the right place. Life without Christ is a life that is full of crisis. Rise to your feet.